people, welcome back to my studio. Today I am working on a new commission. This is a painting for a lady who saw the piece originally in my gallery in the Napa Valley, Gallery 1870 in Yachtville. She loved the painting, but it had a kitty cat where the little dog is. I showed you the sketch of this painting in the very beginning of the video and she wanted to have her dog instead of the cat. So I'm repainting this painting with her dog instead of the cat. I begin with the sky. The, the, all the entire design was sketched up on my canvas with a mixture of mud, which is two parts ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson plus liquid. And that is an oil wash. I work in oil paint. And so that, I get my basic design up there. I label my flowers so I don't forget when I get into the heat of painting what flowers I'm supposed to have up there. Now I'm beginning with the sky. I first put a mixture of white plus cobalt blue in the upper part of the sky. Make that a little bit darker. And then as I get come down closer to the mountains, I'm using a mixture of white plus phthalo blue. And this is a little bit lighter shade. This is the sky. As you look at the sky and it gets closer to the earth, it gets a little bit greener and lighter. As the dome of the sky comes up overhead, it becomes darker and, and more, more dark blue. So this is the light reflecting off of the earth influences the color of the sky closer to the horizon line. So that's why I make it a little bit blue or green and lighter. So I'll go ahead and cover my sky entirely. And I'm going to have some trumpet vine draping over the building here so I'm not too worried about getting up close to the, the roof line right there. Now I just want to make this transition a little bit smoother between the two colors. So I just wipe my brush clean with tissue paper and then I can just smooth the, that transition out. I'm going to bring a little of my lighter color in here. So that gets that sky. Now I'm going to put some clouds back here. This is a mixture of my mud plus white. And this makes just, the mud is just a deep purple that we use for the basis of a lot of our mixtures. Jack developed this palette, he called it a double primary palette. And it is two reds, two yellows, and two blues. And all of the colors are mixed from that. So this mud is the basis of a lot of the orange and the ochre, the sienna mixes. And that's used quite a bit. So I first block my clouds in with the mud mixture. Now the light's coming in from the upper right. So that side of the clouds then are going to have a little light on them. And this is a mixture of my white plus a little ultramarine blue plus some cadmium orange. Just a tiny bit of ultramarine blue and a tiny bit of cadmium orange. That gives a nice warm light on the clouds. I have to take the uh, videos at an angle, put the camera at an angle to the canvas so the perspective may look a little bit skewed, but I can't put the, can the camera directly behind me because I would block it. You wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. So we just have to compromise and, and do it that way. I'm gonna, going to bring a little bit of this light actually down to the horizon. These clouds are getting some light down there. Then I'll have my dark 
in there. And there's going to, going to be a lot of vine coming down through here. I'm going to get a little bit of my, um, my Thalo Blue Plus White and just make a few little openings in these clouds. So we just get a feeling of those fluffy clouds. I don't know how much of that you will see because the vine comes down there, but I at least want to get that in there. This light. Now I want to soften the lights on those clouds, so I take a clean brush and I just pull from the dark into the light, and that just softens those clouds a little bit. Now I may have to come back here and pull a little bit of my lighter color up into the, the blue. See how that softens those? Yeah, I want to just clean my brush, swish it in my thinner, and then just wipe it dry. You need your brush, brush to be real dry. You don't want any extra thinner in there. And then just pull straight down. See how that softens those clouds? You want your, so your sky to be soft so that it drops back. In painting, the way to give the impression, there are several ways you can give the, imp the impression of depth in a painting. And one is soft and hard edges. Soft edges go back, hard, defined edges come forward. As things go into the distance, they get a little out of focus, the edges get soft. So that is why I want my edges on my clouds to be, be softer. So that just falls back into the distance. A little bit more of my light in here. And now I'm going to do my most distant mountain. It's going to be a mixture of ultramarine blue plus just a tiny bit of mud plus white. I don't have that quite dark enough. I need to make that a little bit darker. Just add a little bit more of my ultramarine blue and a little tiny bit more mud. I pre-mix most of my colors right before I get started and then if I have to go back and make adjustments like that, then I can. But I want most of my colors to be mixed out so I can just go ahead and paint. And then as we get here, this, the clouds and the mountain are going to be just about the same value. And that edge of the mountain just kind of disappears. And that's one reason I wanted the light on those clouds there, because then that gives you that light coming in behind. I don't want my mounts to be the same line on the top of them, so I, I dip down here. As you come down into the lower part of this mountain, there's mist that hangs in between the mountain ridges, so I want this to be a little bit lighter down here. And this is just some white added into that mountain mixture. Again, I'm going to clean my brush out and get some of my darkest color here and just kind of smooth that transition. The top of the mountain is going to be a little bit darker. And then the lower part in between the ridges is, is going to have that little mist hanging in there. The moisture just collects in the low slope, in the valleys between the mountains. I'll say it in a minute. I'm also softening this top edge of this mountain so that it goes back. I don't want a real hard edge there. So I can again, I can just take, take my brush clean. See how I just go along that edge and just soften it just a little bit. So that's how we do the sky and the most distant mountain. I really appreciate you watching my videos. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel 
and also visit my blog. The link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of my video. On my blog, I show the entire step-by-step -step process of this painting as well as others I do. And you can subscribe to my blog where you'll receive an email every time I make a new post. So thank you again, and you just have a wonderful, wonderful day.